Join me tonight on Twitch at 11.30 p.m. Eastern after the conclusion of Sunday Night Football, where we'll talk about everything that happened this week in the NFL. And join me Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern to play some live NFL trivia for a chance to win cash prizes. Link in the description below. And now, on with our feature presentation. Why do players retire? Some of the most common reasons are the ones that you'd expect. They're too old and they don't have anything left on the tank anymore. They've suffered too many injuries or perhaps one absolutely devastating injury, and they're not able to play again because of it. They want to pursue other things or spend more time with their families. However, there have been plenty of weird reasons why players have retired in the past, and we've talked about a lot of them on this channel. From Al Atkinson retiring because he hated Joe Namath so much, to Joe Namath retiring because Commissioner Pete Rozelle wouldn't let him own a nightclub, there have definitely been some bizarre reasons that players have had for leaving the game. But this one might just be the craziest one of them all. Imagine a player retiring because he felt that he wasn't getting enough playing time. Alright, that by itself doesn't seem too crazy. But now, imagine a starting player, who I cannot stress this enough, is guaranteed a starting spot, retiring because he felt he wasn't getting enough playing time in the preseason. A starter complaining about playing too little in the preseason and deciding to retire because of it? As ridiculous as that sounds, that's exactly what happened to New Orleans Saints linebacker Whitney Paul in 1983. And this is the story behind that. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand just who Whitney Paul is, why he was with the Saints in the first place, and why he retired for what has to be the stupidest possible reason imaginable. Our story begins all the way back in 1976, when Paul was drafted in the 10th round by the Kansas City Chiefs. The Colorado defensive end and linebacker was not expected to do a whole lot. 10th round picks are complete crapshoots, and of the 26 players taken in the 10th round that year, 15 of them, or nearly 60% of the field, never played it down in the NFL. However, not only did Paul play a down in the NFL and defy those odds, but he became a very solid player in the process. Paul would start eight games as a rookie, and by 1977, would become a regular member of the team's starting lineup. In six seasons with the Chiefs, Paul played in 100 games, started 72 of them, and had 22 and a half sacks. He was a critical part of Kansas City's very strong 1979 defense, which ranked fifth in the league in points allowed. On that defense, he had eight sacks, which was the second most on the team, and started 15 out of a possible 16 games. When you play six seasons with one team, and in all six of those seasons you start more than half of the games, including a 1978 season where he started every single one of those 16 games, he definitely did something right. By the summer of 1982, however, it looked like Paul was on his way out of Kansas City. The Chiefs went heavy at the linebacker position in the draft, as with their first four picks, they spent three of them on linebackers, taking North Carolina linebacker Calvin Daniels in the second round, North Texas linebacker Lewis Haynes in the fourth round, and Virginia linebacker Stuart Anderson in the fourth round. And the New Orleans Saints needed some pass rushing help badly. They only had 27 sacks during the 1981 season, which was only better than three other teams in the league that year. And of the 10 picks they had, they did not use a single one of them on a linebacker. That summer, the Saints gave up a draft pick in exchange for Whitney Paul. After a highly successful first chapter to his career with the Chiefs, which took him all the way until the end of his 20s, he was about to start a new life in New Orleans. Safe to say, this was a pretty strange one. The Saints pass rush improved drastically in 1982, and even though Paul didn't start any games for the team that season, he was regularly on the field in passing situations, and was regularly making plays, as he finished tied for fourth on the team in sacks. Considering the fact that every player above him literally did not miss a start, that's awfully impressive. And to show just how much better the Saints pass rush got that season, they went from 27 sacks in 1981 to 31 sacks in 1982. Now without any context, that doesn't seem like a huge improvement at all. However, remember that only 9 games were played in 1982 due to the strike, so over a 16 game season, it would come out to 55 sacks, or more than double what they had in 1981. They were tied for 6 in sacks, which considering the fact that they were in the bottom 5 before Paul came over, I would say that's not too shabby. Bum Phillips and company were highly impressed with Paul, who was showing no signs of slowing down as he was entering his 30s. They were so impressed, in fact, that in the 1983 offseason, they signed him to a 4 year deal worth more than $100,000 per year. For a player to make 6 figures back then was impressive. Only six teams in the league had an average salary above 100000 with those figures often being skewed by good performing quarterbacks and running backs. For some more perspective, Lawrence Taylor's base salary in 1983 was somewhere in the ballpark of $110,000. So for Paul to be getting paid similar to what the best defensive player of the game at the time was making has to be worth something. And it clearly meant that Paul was going to be a starter on the team in 1983, just like he was in Kansas City. Back in 1983, you're not giving someone six figures a year over an extended period of time if you don't intend on featuring them heavily in your plans. While he alternated at linebacker in 1982 alongside Rob Nairn, by 1983, it was extremely clear that there would be no alternating whatsoever, as this was Paul's spot all the way through. Because of this, he was going to play with the first stringers in that 1983 preseason. 
He was going to play alongside guys like Ricky Jackson and Dirt Winston, and he was going to fit into that defensive system. But for Paul, as we would find out, that wasn't good enough for him. Because what happened next was the strangest reason for a retirement that you're ever going to see. On August 20th, 1983, the New Orleans Saints put the Houston Oilers in their 4th of 5 preseason games that season. The Saints won a 20 to 13. Not that the final score really matters when we're talking about exhibitions. But what does matter is the starting lineup, since that was going to be the lineup that in all likelihood would be trotted out there for the first week of the regular season when everything started mattering. And sure enough, Paul was in the starting lineup. He played 25 snaps with the first string, and then his day was done. Pretty standard stuff. The backups then got some time, with Rob Nairn now relegated to a backup role like we all knew was going to happen, playing 11 snaps. In other words, this was your typical preseason coaching strategy. Play the first stringers, and then play the backups. Nobody on planet Earth has a problem with this. Or at least, nobody with a rational mind should have a problem with this. But Whitney Paul had a problem with this. He didn't like the fact that he was losing snaps to Nairn. Even though Paul had a starting spot locked up, even though Paul was playing with the first stringers, even though Paul got more playing time than Nairn, and even though, once again, this is the preseason that we're talking about here. I would ask what a rational person would do in a situation like this, but let's be honest. When you're a starter complaining about preseason snaps, and you're complaining about the backups playing in a meaningless game, I'm not sure we're thinking rationally here. However, instead of Paul talking to his coach about the issue, or just wanting to get a vote of confidence making sure that even though Nairn played, that he didn't have to worry about a thing because every little thing was going to be alright, he decided to send a telegram announcing his retirement. He skipped a Monday workout and on Tuesday announced that he was quitting the game for good. Because screw the coaching staff for not having a starter play all four quarters at every single snap of a preseason game. And to say that the coaching staff was perplexed by all of this would be an understatement. And the even crazier part, or maybe not so crazy if you realize how common fake retirements are on this channel, this did not last long at all. At first, the coaching staff had every reason to believe that Paul was being sincere and genuine about the news. Defensive coordinator Wade Phillips defended his coaching style, saying in what should be an obvious statement, it's preseason, and we don't play every guy every play. Regarding how Paul handled the retirement, Phillips said he just left. Meanwhile, his dad, head coach Bump Phillips, said that as far as he was concerned, Paul was legitimately retired, and that he believed him wholeheartedly. Phillips didn't think he was coming back, or if he did, didn't seem too confident about it. When asked about what would happen if Paul decided to change his mind, Phillips said, we'll handle that when or if we get to it. However, as you can probably guess, one week later, Paul was back with the team. After announcing his retirement from the NFL on August 23rd, he returned to the Saints on August 30th. Paul never said anything about this to the media, so who knows the exact reason that he came back? Maybe he realized how stupid this whole thing was, either through his own self-reflection or through someone else, whether it be a family member, close friend, or a teammate. Maybe he realized that he was throwing away a six-figure salary over playing time in the preseason and realized just how absurd that sounded. Whatever the case, Paul was back in the fold, and Bum Phillips adopted a mantra of forgive and forget. Even though Paul was fine for the whole ordeal by Phillips, Phillips was ready to move on, saying we worked out our differences to my satisfaction, so we're going to take him back on the team. He has returned, and he has acted. I am satisfied that this guy is going to do what I want him to do, and the way I want it done. So just to recap where we are in this story heading into the 1983 season, Whitney Paul was a veteran defensive end who had been in the league for nearly a decade at this point, was upset that the backups were playing in the preseason even though he played with the first string, decided that the best way and best course of action to rectify the situation was to retire, and then came back one week later with the whole team pretending like nothing ever happened. That is a doozy. And to end this crazy story, you might be surprised to realize that Paul actually played a fairly long time in the NFL after that. Most of the time when you see a situation like this, the player in question doesn't have a whole lot of years left to get to the game. Not this time, because Paul would not only continue to play in the NFL after this, but would actually play at a really high level. During the 1983 season, he started 15 out of the possible 16 games at the right outside linebacker position, and he had two interceptions alongside five and a half sacks. It's the only time in his career that he had a season with multiple interceptions and more than four sacks. And he followed that up in 1984 with arguably the best year of his career when he started all 16 games and recorded a career-high 9.5 sacks. The Saints had an incredible pass rush that season where they recorded 55 sacks, tied for 7th in the league, and Paul was a big part of why that was the case. However, his production would decline after that. In 1985, Paul only started 8 games, with his sack total being half to 5. And in 1986, he found his way back onto the team that started his career, when he rejoined the Kansas City Chiefs. He was primarily a backup there, starting just one out of a possible 16 games, and he recorded one and a half sacks at the age of 33 years old. 
Following the 1986 season, after 11 seasons of professional football, Whitney Paul hung it up for good this time and never played again. By the time his career ended, he had 47 sacks to his name in 155 games and 111 starts. Again, for a 10th round pick who is more likely than not never to play a snap in the NFL based on how the rest of his class did, for Paul to have the career that he did was incredible and deserves to be celebrated. But despite his very solid career lasting more than a decade, the thing that Paul is probably best remembered for was this bizarre incident right here. Because the way Paul left the game for a week in 1983 was nothing short of strange, and I think that goes without saying. So if any starting players are watching this video, a word of advice. If you're guaranteed to be in the starting lineup and you're not playing every snap of the preseason, do not stress about it. Do not decide that you're going to retire because of it. Do not think anything of it. It is literally standard operating procedure. It is literally the preseason. If only Whitney Paul got the memo 40 years ago about that. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JJ9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.